I'm, I'm, she says, that's okay. I'll do the praying. And I guess she grabbed his hand or her hand and just started praying. You know? Uh, and I just, it's like, I hope if I ever get to a point where I'm really sickly, that they just use it for the glory of God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what's her desire to use her illness, no matter what the end result. Um, she had a basketball. <laughs> Oh. So did your email say the nature of the kingdom is where we're going to start? Yes. Tony and Chris will not be here today. They have uh, they have kids coming. Uh, they're uh, from Maine, the Maine kids, or no, no, they're mission kids. I don't know which ones. <laughs> well, because the Maine kids don't have kids. Oh, okay. They hit their, their daughter and son in law. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Well, they'll be listening to this. I'm sorry, Tony, Chris. I can't remember who, who you said was going to be with you. But. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing today? Great. Beautiful day, beautiful weather, great mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, to see that sun come up at Heritage Park for sunrise service. Miss you that one time you came. I went across the river. To, to one that I've been to before because I was heading to Gambit, Connecticut. So I found it that way. So across the river, what specific area? Hope Community Church, which is on the top of the hill. You have to go 57 to our tea. Yeah. You take a right. <laughs> Not even a half a mile if you look up the hill. There's a church on top of the hill. Uh -huh. And uh, they have a sunrise service. Probably earlier too, like a lot of them had it at six fifteen. Ours was at seven. This was six. Six. Well, you get dark right into the whole thing. Then. It was absolutely awesome watching the sun come up. It was yeah, crazy. from from dark to the yeah. Yours, I think I would have been there for six thirty. I would have been a half an hour sitting around. Well, I would have bought something to eat. Right. I got a picture from a friend who moved to Rhode Island, and she went to a sunrise service over the ocean. Over the oceans <laughs> on the Easter Sunday morning. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we can get started. You know, Carol will probably be a little late. She's always late. And then so. the young lady. It's been joining us on and off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Diane. Diane. Yeah. So, would someone like to open us in prayer? Okay. I will. Father, again, wow, well, it's just good to be here. Good to be here in your house with your people and the family. And as we've already shared, yeah. Yeah, still basking and basking in the, the joy, the joy, the peace, the hope that this world does not have that we can reflect as we live our lives. And of course, as we serve you. So to go through your word right now, you certainly have something for each and every one of us and input from each and every one of us that will help us understand more of what it's all about and how better to serve you. Be with those that are hurting in Jesus name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the last few weeks, we've been um, looking at the proclamation of the kingdom. Jesus proclaimed the kingdom. His disciples proclaimed the kingdom. Paul proclaimed the kingdom. <laughs> Seemed like it was a pretty important message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today, we're just going to say, well, let's find out, well, what is the nature of the kingdom? And you, another way of putting it, I suppose, is what is the kingdom? Although I got to tell you, I don't think Jesus ever said 
what the kingdom of God is. Um, he said what it is like. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. There's no one actually, not, none of the disciples or him said, this is what the kingdom of God is. He said, well, it's like this. <laughs> okay. It's like, okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, somebody want to read Mark 12, 28 to 34? Did you say Mark 12, 28? Yes. To what? To 34. <laughs> well, did some of these off. Okay. Sorry, you want one of these? Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them, reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him saying, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it. And it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, well said teacher, <laughs> I like what you say. You did a good job there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you have spoken the truth. For there is one God, and there is no other but He. And mm. to love Him with all your heart, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. That's still, that was still the, uh, I guess, the scribe making that confession. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think that, I... Now, when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, yeah, okay, he <laughs> said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God, but after no one dared the question. <laughs> Yeah. Is that saying it's one thing to make a confession, but it's another thing to actually have the truth hidden in your heart and live by that? Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah. But he's getting close. He's not far. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's what they're there for. Mine is outdated here. Okay. I got the, oh, you just got the right one. I'm way back. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very good. So this, um, the whole section here is, is focusing on the fact that the kingdom is not a physical kingdom. He's not far from the kingdom. Well, it's not, that's not because he's in some physical proximity to a, a city, <laughs> but it is because he's in physical proximity to the to the king. Absolutely, <laughs> and that's not. A, in fact, you're talking about the New Testament doesn't define what the kingdom is, but I think a, a, there may be not so much a definition, but a description is wherever the king is, that's where the kingdom. is. Mm. <laughs> and if we're with the, if we're with either spiritually or metaphysically or whatever, if we're with the king, we're in the king. If we're not, God help. His presence is, I guess, maybe the definition of what the, uh, the kingdom is. Yeah. Um, Where he is. 
where his work is being accomplished. Can I digress a bit along the same line? So, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, it was like an epiphany. I I love it when that happens. I can't remember if it was this morning or if it was last night. I was maybe it was just thinking about I, I don't know I don't I don't remember what it was. But do you remember back when Israel said to Samuel, we want a king just like every other yes. nation? And God had communicated to Samuel his disappointment because he, God, wanted to be their king. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the point isn't what transpired. They got their way and mm -hmm. history. <laughs> you know, tells us how wrong that decision really was. <laughs> but then, fast forward to the New Testament, Jesus, who is the King of Kings. That seems to be pretty much pointing to equating the God of the Old Testament and Jesus of the New Testament. <laughs> is God wanting to be their or? king? And Jesus is the King of Kings. That makes them one and the same. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know? yes. I love That's it right. when, stuff. when the Trinity is, oh, in this case, between Jesus and the Yahweh, there's this 100% connection. <laughs> it, it just like, I never, it's such a duh. <laughs> you know, like, it, just, it just jumped out. Ah, okay. All right. Enough for the digression. That was good. That was good. I'm not sure that's a digression. Mm. That's well, he does yeah. fall into uh, the idea of kings and kingdoms, and yes. but not what you're talking. So um, Luke 17, 20 and 21. Um, where are we? Are we, are we in the notes? Where are we? I've got it right here. Oh, oh, right here. The kingdom. Oh, you're still. So you're. It's right after the proclamation is the nature. So, I can read it. Thank you. Once you have um, Luke 20, Luke 17, once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied, The kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, Here it is, or There it is, because the kingdom of God is. Whoa, yeah, within us. Whoa, that uh, thing that you sent us, yeah. you narrowed it down. You because I've got it here, it's got like 20 some odd pages, right? Right, right. I, I copied, I, I didn't want to copy the whole thing and get passed it out because if they if you misplaced it, then no, I understand. I, I, we have trouble finding it. Page five. Anyway, um, so um, yes, uh, that whole within um, that that word is really better better translated among you or um, uh, in your midst because. You think about it, these are Pharisees he's talking to. He's not telling them that the kingdom of God is in them. Hmm. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there are some people who would say, oh, yeah, the kingdom of God's in all of us. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter that you, you haven't accepted Christ. Everybody, everybody has the kingdom huh. of God. In, and that's, that's just not true. You know, God's where Jesus is, and Jesus is not with you. And you, you haven't, you haven't let him in, and he's not, kingdom's not there. Yeah, so that's almost misleading then when you, when you take it literally, they're within you. And yet, like you're saying, how could it be within people that don't have, have the love of Christ in their hearts, right? 
right? Or professing Christians, if you want to put it that way. So, okay, so, so like you're saying then is within the body of believers. And he is saying within you, meaning what specifically in that verse then? Well, I'm saying that the Greek is more like in your midst. Yeah, uh, and I get that, and I can. Um, I so can, it's like yeah. it's, it's among you. It's, it's among and, yeah. and in this context, because Jesus was there, the kingdom of God's there. Um, and I mean, because like we said, <laughs> where Jesus is, there's his kingdom. Yeah, uh, where his body is. Yeah, there's his kingdom. Yeah, the body of Christ. Exactly. I like that one. For sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, if you want to use that word within, then you, 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 I don't know how to make it say what what it should be saying. I don't. Do you have any any thoughts how you could say within and it means something? <laughs> I think sometimes context, though. Yeah. Is like you said, he's talking to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Now, if he was talking to his disciples, his disciples, it may have a double meaning, mm -hmm. right? So, because the Greek word is um, has several meanings, as often they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Somebody want to look up uh, Luke eleven twenty? Well, <laughs> while you're looking something up, <laughs> you know, I think it's interesting. Um, my eyes glanced ahead of um, where I have read. Um, because <coughs> we didn't talk about uh, kind of coming when you were. You will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, There he is, or here he is. Do not go running off that. But the Son of Man, in, in his day, will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Um, So in, we we just talked about the kingdom being amongst you, and now he's talking about his his not being there and his coming again. Which so I think that just emphasizes that um, the kingdom of God has to do with Jesus being there. Hmm. Oh, you have eleven twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. You want you to read Mary? Could, could. Sure. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. And that was um, in the context was. Uh, they they were saying he was <laughs> casting out demons by by Beelzebub, uh, the ruler of demons, and uh, and he he said that's that doesn't make any sense because <laughs> a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot <laughs> stand. And uh, but uh, <laughs> but if. If he's casting out demons, if he's not casting out demons by Beelzebub, then he's casting them out by the finger of God, and therefore the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God is king over the demonic realm. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's made specific what, when it says, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, mm -hmm. not with any other source, then that's the real thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
then the kingdom of God is as among you. Mm -hmm. So there are specifics that define mm -hmm. the kingdom of God among us. Mm -hmm. Even if other, pe other uh, people, what have you, can cast out demons, that doesn't necessarily mean they're doing it. Certainly not under the direction of God or the power of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because there are devil controlled people that can do such things. Mm -hmm. Right? And we have to discern between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if you see someone who's not who, who is actually not a believer and he's casting out demons, he's not really casting out demons. That's not really happening. They they would be a if the devil's uh best at deception. So you're not that's okay. it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be a, a deception. That's it's true of any anything, any of the miracles. Any miracles that the devil's going to give is a deception. You know? Because he's the author of lies. That's who he is. <laughs> so so if uh, an event actually takes place, and then so then how to, it's a deception, but yet it, it's a reality that it's actually happened, or we're just thinking it happened as we're even seeing this take place. No, well, you ever, trying, watch, you ever, watch, ever watch a magic show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I got you. <clears throat> yeah, sleight of hand, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's some reality to it, yeah. but yeah, but that's what crosses my mind is that. Um, a miracle of God is far and as good as it's been done. Yeah. Um, is it not possible that the devil may do things that appear to be a demon or actually cast out that demon uh, through this person? Because, I mean, you know, they're. The devil's friends, so to speak. So they leave because he asked them to leave. Um, but it's <laughs> not for God's glory. It's not for the benefit of that person. It somehow furthers Satan's goals, mm -hmm. as opposed to it just being a, a charade. Um, perhaps a, it's a bigger charade. I don't know of any know. examples of that, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus mm. kind of said that that isn't mm. what happens, but I, but I could see it uh, as a, as you said, for his purposes. And, um, you know, if, if someone's, if someone, Jesus said that oh, someone's uh, demons have left mm -hmm. someone, and and it hasn't been replaced by the basic hasn't the Holy Spirit hasn't replaced that he hasn't filled filled that with something with with the goodness of God it's gonna be seven times as many demonic forces coming into his life yeah that mm. that would cross my mind that one takes the other mm. uh, there's Carol Carol. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's true with all of us. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the point of this whole section is that this is a spiritual rule, it's not a physical rule. You know, the kingdom of God, you don't come, isn't going to come because you, you say, oh, there it is. He set up his kingdom. You know, they thought he was going to set up a kingdom, a real like, kingdom with a crown on his head. And he was going to you know, chase the Romans out or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that isn't the kingdom that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not something you observe with, with your eyes. Mm -hmm. it's something you see in, in the spirit. Yeah. Um,
and that and we actually last week i i brought this this passage up john 18 36 yeah i gave you a peek into it because it was along the lines of it was right in easter season um, because he replied, he replied to Pontius Pilate, "My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here." There you go. So Matthew, um, when Matthew talks about the kingdom of God, he actually says the kingdom of heaven. So uh -huh. that gives you an idea. Of where this is the kingdom come from and of course jesus with we know the lord's prayer is thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so the kingdom of heaven is it's appropriate um now when he says it's not of this world physically speak yeah it, it's not tangible of, physical it's a different of this world is different than it's not here among us. You know, it is. We we want his kingdom to be here. His, his kingdom is among us. In, uh, internally, in, in his, in his it, as we uh, as we experience him and, and share him. Uh, there you others. go. So it's inside and it comes out of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. That that time. Yeah. So. I would interpret when I say when I see it says my kingdom is not of this world. Uh, first of all, the word of is important. It's not that's not where it comes from. It comes from heaven, right? We just said. The other thing is, um, it's not of this world system. I think if you put that in there, it actually this world what? It's not of the world system. System, not you even know, close. <laughs> you know, the, we've got the world system. We. Uh, we we can't, we're not going to bring the kingdom of God in because we vote for the right president. Uh, that's evident. Um, or because, you know, because we've, we've got all the right laws in place and now we, you know, we're, ah, we're bringing in the kingdom of God because we, we're fixing things, you know, here on earth. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I like what he said, where you, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause I was born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts on these passages? Okay, it won't take us a couple of years. No. <laughs> yeah, <'cause I'm> not... <laughs> uh huh. Although it's not a physical kingdom, it says uh, on one of this, so it's not a physical kingdom, a true kingdom nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we follow the king. That, that, that's kind of in contrast to kingdom of heaven. It's really to establish, to bring about the kingdom bringing it from the heavenly realm into the earthly realm. There was uh, another time in history where um, the kingdom of God was truly had a connection with this world. That was in the Garden of Eden. They walked with him. You know, talked, you know, was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfection. 
And that didn't happen for long, for long, but you know. No, we don't know how long it was. No, that's right. Mm. That's what you mean by for long. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I, good point. I have my own opinions about that. About how long they in the Garden of Eden before the fall? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And yeah, I've never really thought about that. How long did they walk and talk with him before they fell into temptation? There's no hint at the time frame. It's just, I, I I think that there's indication um, that they had children before it fell. Mm, now that's the thought I hadn't considered. Childbirth. Well, how would she know that there wasn't any childbirth to know that what? Now there will be. <laughs> yeah. Potential. Thought. It's a and thought. Wow. The, fam the family walked in. Where they can't get his wife. Yeah, he went to the land of Nod. It's like, the whole land of Nod? Where did that come from? <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, I, 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 that's what I think. And I think when the sons of God knew the daughters of men, I think it was the, 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 those who were um, born of Adam, they were still sons of before them, and they were fall, and then they all, then they all fell, you know, it's like, because of Adam's sin, they all, they all fell. Anyway, that's my opinion. It doesn't matter. I mean. <laughs> um, okay. Terminology. I guess my only thought to that was, was that it wasn't mentioned, so it wasn't necessarily for us to know that specific for any purpose other than what you say. Why couldn't they have a fa family walking with God? You know, it was eventually going to happen through the sin consequence. But if they had a family, it wouldn't be painful. Then not not the Garden of Eden. If they had, children. it would be perfect. It would be God God provided rather than man provided. And so, in in my scenario, this is my scenario. I'm not saying it's not from God necessarily. <laughs> Cain and Abel were the first born of fallen man that, that was in the well yeah that, i mean that's what the bible says right and that's why i'm saying you know what what's between the lines okay yeah well the terminology of matthew i think we've covered that basically it's a, with the kingdom of heaven if you go through these verses kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god are basically the same thing but matthew has a a different he expresses it differently hmm. um, and perhaps it says perhaps because the jews reluctance to using the name, the name of god so they <laughs> or i think that the lord had another had the, wanted us to know where this kingdom came from <laughs> yeah. So, do we want to go on to two Roman numeral two? <laughs> Kingdom is the reign of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, first of all, it's the word kingdom. Obviously, mm -hmm. kingdom is where there's a king. And there are subjects to that. There are kingdoms of this world, even even though we don't have as many kings, actual labeled kings. And there are kingdoms of darkness. Hmm. And that's obvious. <laughs> Everywhere. Um. So uh, when you say that there are kingdoms, darkness <clears throat> what comes to my mind is the uh, again non-physical kingdoms within the physical uh, mm -hmm. for, for example uh, a particular society of people group of people that bind themselves together that uh, 
represent a dark, our dark within our, like the United States or Canada or England or China. Any Kleenex? There's some. Oh, there's some right there. Is that no? Was that? Yeah, I don't think those were. Is that yeah. Huggies? No, they're... that's something else. Yeah, you're gonna have to do it. Napkins. Napkins. Uh, Okay. You do what you need to, but you're going to get some Kleenex downstairs. I keep bringing up the the passage of, of Jesus in his prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done. And he, he brings that up too. Um, uh, and and in B, to B, it says, note the Hebrew parallelism saying the same thing in two different ways. And it's like, your kingdom come, your will be done. That's how you know his kingdom's come, I guess, is when you, his will's being done, right? <laughs> and then one of our favorite passages, we have a song for it. Matthew 6.10. Uh, is that six? No, not six ten. I'll say six thirty three. Six thirty three. Yeah, that's that's one of my big favorites. We have a song. Hold it right? off. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. Right. Yep. Yeah, uh, but that's you know what you break that you break that scripture down. It's pretty much a package all in one. Really, talks about our goals and objectives, and then it says if you strive for these, guess what? All these things. I like that word all. The detergent all, total and complete from our childhood. <laughs> By the way, all is coming back. You see it on the tour now. But anyhow. All, <laughs> <laughs> but and I and you know when I talk to people, I, I bring in that respect saying, you know what, it's all. And and that that means there's no exception. All that God wants for us will be added unto everything <laughs> if, if we <laughs> seek him first, his kingdom, righteousness. Three factors there. First, kingdom, righteousness, three factors. <laughs> and okay, so have you thought about what that a lot of times when we we say seek ye first the kingdom of God? <laughs> We, we almost kind of leave out the word kingdom and say, well, seek ye first God, which, of course, well, is important. Yeah. That, that is. Yeah. But and is seeking him all just, it's, it's not just, it's just not me and him. His kingdom is. His okay. People. All right. And so mm -hmm. I. I use mm -hmm. um, so. We're not just, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to belittle seeking him. Of course, we're seeking him. We're seeking all that he has for us. And what he has for us is a kingdom. And that kingdom is composed of us. Yeah. It goes back to the first greatest two commandments. It's our seeking for us to have a relationship with him and a relationship with each other exactly two most important commandments. and and 
<laughs> with the world's drought. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's seeking for us to have a relationship with the world too. To have time, so of pleasure to have. Monetary growth. <laughs> First, we have our time in the world. If if it's not to burden the kingdom, what is it for? <laughs> yeah, basically wasted it in the scope of things. Thinking about eternity, of course. Yeah. And all talents and expect us to use them to further his kingdom, and then he just don't use them now to give it. Hmm. Or they use them for their own personal gain, hmm. um, for, for self worth, which is a personal gain, right? Yeah. Yeah. How can you just balance it? Because I think we'll play video games. No. <laughs> Maybe your talent of purpose on this. Amen. <laughs> Love you. What? <laughs> Where are my grandkids? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, are Tony and Chris hooked up with us? I'm listening. No. Oh. <laughs> They're on the road. Oh, he wanted me to make sure that I recorded it so that they could play it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So in B, it says, in one sense, the kingdom of God has always existed. I'm not sure that's in one sense. It has already so <laughs> this, this, this one sense thing. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. And it existed in heaven. He has his kingship in heaven. He rules over the, the angel, the angelic host. So... Um, and it was always his intention to have his kingdom on earth. And he started it with the garden. And now he's finishing it with his son. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, so here's some examples. Um, somebody wanted to look up these Psalms. 103, 19, 145. Nineteen. The Lord's throne is established in heaven. God's royal power rules all over it. Bless the Lord, all you angels. Mighty strength of it. And he is for every day. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Forty-five. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. <laughs> your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your domain is yours through all generations. <laughs> and then Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> He uh, had a lesson to be learned, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, you remember? He uh, was, was sent out eating grass. Is that, I mean, that was Nebuchadnezzar, right? I think so, yeah. He, I mean, 
Yeah, the fake lottery. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Well, I do. <laughs> Daniel 4, 1 to 3, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his works. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his domain is from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that was all I was going to read there. Yeah. I can read 32, 32 to 35. I don't know why we want to skip them. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of hard names. Mm. <laughs> I'll start with 31. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven King Nebuchadnezzar, to you. It is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses. But thou, that very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from the men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. <laughs> and at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his domain is everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? <laughs> oh, God, uh, uh, yeah, we cannot question him. No, it was any good, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I like the way Nebuchadnezzar and Enzel, and at the end, then the good stuff followed after he was humiliated and anything. And I like that because God used that then and, and allows us to have hope when we blow it. When we go against him, whatever, right? He'll he'll allow us to do it, and the consequences will certainly come. But so will healing and forgiveness, as is so beautifully described in in that song. I think he's alive. Here's this guy, man, denied him vehemently. If I can use that word three times, and how beautifully God, Jesus, forgave him and used him, because that's. His love for us that says, we're the farthest thing from perfect. We are going to fail, but it's how we deal with that failure. And of course, Peter was very repentant, obviously, you know, and how God used him. But strong will, right? Strong will. Go get him. But I, I love his personality. Gung ho, sometimes too gung ho, sometimes open up and insert foot, et cetera, et cetera. And God knows that, you know. And so there you go. Like just a great example, and of course, here's Nebuchadnezzar. You know, sort sort of a similar similar situation as far as failing, as far as you know, doing his thing, and and then God did, forgave him, healed him, and <laughs> lifted him back up. David, I guess, maybe one of the all time examples of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Daniel 2.44. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, 
nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to the, an end, but it will itself endure forever. Whoa. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I like that. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. And that obviously isn't something that has exactly occurred, but his kingdom has been established. Um, and in the end, he he will be king of kings, Lord of lords, and and, 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 and the Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. <laughs> every, I like that word, every. No, it's no exception. Everyone will be, whether they like it or not, they will be forced to bow and acknowledge him as king of kings. Oh, I don't even know if it's forced. No, I don't think it's forced. I think just every knee is good. When you see him, when you see him, really see him, it's like. He'll do it willingly, I'm, do you think I'm that? done. I'm done in. I'm done in. Oh, and with yeah. resignation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one way or another, it will happen. There, there's, there's no defying it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, never can ever had a dream, and Daniel has come in and interpreted it. And um, it it starts out with um, Nebuchadnezzar is is the the head of this. The thing that he saw, and that was gold. And then there were other kingdoms to come after it. Um, and, and and I haven't read through all of it, but there there are bronze and clay and all like that. Um, and right after what I read, um, it, it says, "This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that." Broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. And I assume those are all the invaded. Yeah, in Babylon and Ethereum. Right. So, and that rock has got to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and so, this verse forty-four is talking about like the birth of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus, Jesus, that coming mm. of Jesus, mm. as as opposed to In the last day, the last coming, yeah. of Jesus. right? Okay, that would be my interpretation of Daniel's interpretation. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me see if I can interpret your interpretation of Daniel's interpretation. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and on and on it goes. <laughs> then Wayne will give us his. No, I think she's right. <laughs> good, good response, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> So, somebody want to read Luke one thirty one thirty to thirty three? Mm -hmm. 31 to 33? Yes. Okay. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never. <laughs> Even when he comes back, look at him. <laughs> right. Although this this time together right now, Will, um, it's 1026. In this manner? 
<laughs> Let's see what do we got here. Oh, yeah. So next week we'll finish up this uh, the kingdom as it relates to Jesus, and then go on to the next one, which I glad I connected the two of them. Yeah. The establishment of the kingdom. Can't believe we went. went Basically, through an entire section in one setting. <laughs> how about that? Well, we'll see how it goes. So the time of prayer, what do we have? Okay. Okay. Well, make sure we let Tony and Chris know. Yeah. What the, what the third request are. They really like to keep those keep back. And I'll send it with the... I know, it's fine. Because the only ones will ever look at it, but, but um, mm -hmm. okay. we, we do we want our time. We just want, yeah, yeah, yeah. Group, you know? 